Okay, if I told you three apples cost six dollars, and then I asked you how many do two apples cost? You probably tell me, well, if it's six dollars for three apples, then that means that one apple is going to cost me two dollars, right? So it's one dollar per apple. So therefore, two apples is going to cost me four dollars, right? And that's fine. But let's say I add a bit, a bit of information to this, and now I tell you that one apple actually costs three dollars. So how does that work now? Well, remember that before you came up with this. So pretty much what this is saying in is that the function y, y being the cost, is just two times x, x being the number of apples. So the cost will be two times the number of apples that you want, right? But now they gave you that extra piece of information. Now you, the situation changed, right? Because now you have this. This does not agree with this, right? So if I had one apple, I would expect the cost to be two dollars, not three. So what we can do in that case is we can assume there's a linear relationship between the apples and the cost, and we can find out how much two apples would cost based on that assumption that it's a linear relationship. So what we're doing in reality when we do a linear interpolation is, let's talk about looking at the graph. We're saying that, okay, we have apples on the x-axis and the cost on the y-axis, right? So here we have the cost and here we have the apples. Right? And we're saying that when we have one apple, the cost is going to be $3. So we're going to have this guy here. And when, the, when we have um, three apples, the cost is going to be $6. So over here. So let me go ahead and do this. So what, and then if we're assuming a linear relationship, what we're saying is literally that these guys are connected by a line, right? A straight line. And then if I'm looking for a value in which I can find the cost of two apples, all I need to do is look where this, these two apples would fall in a straight line and then read it off the graph. In my case, it's a bit off because my two is not where it should be. Let's do it over here. There you go. Okay, so I would read it off the graph. And then I'll get the value for the interpolation here. Right? And how do we do that? Well, if we're assuming a straight line, then we know that a line can be defined like so. Right? That's a, a line. This is the slope of the line. And this is any two values on the x-axis. And these are only two values on the y-axis. So note that we have everything we need to be able to define what will be the cost of the, the two apples given there's a linear relationship between the two there. So what I'm doing is I'm taking two discrete values, that is two values that are not continuous, this guy and this guy, and I'm creating a relationship, a linear relationship between them, and then I'm trying to find a value between the two. That's why it's, that's why it's called an interpolation, because inter between, right? If I were to look for a point that was outside of that, so let's say I want now to know how many it would cost me for six apples, then I'll have to look at a value that's outside my range, so outside that line there, and I'll have to extrapolate that line, right? Okay, so enough of the extrapolation, let's stick with the interpolation. So how am I going to do that? Well, I have all the things that I need to be able to, to find the slope of this uh, line. And for that, I'm going to put the two values of y that I know. I know it's, it's $6 and $3. My slope is what I'm trying to find. And the two values that I know is that it's three apples for $6 and one apple for $3. Right? Therefore, the slope of this line is going to be three halves. Right? So it's the, the, the inclination of this line, right? The, the, the angle here, the angle theta that it makes is, is two thirds, okay? So it's two thirds. Now, the proportion, okay? That's the proportion, how much one thing changes in relationship to the other. So with that information, now I can go back to this relationship here and I can rewrite the equation the way that I want to find my y, right? So I want to find the y, and this is the y for when I have two apples, right? And then for y, oh, I can choose any y value that I have. So I can choose, if I want to use, I can use three or six. It's really, really, really up to you. So let's go ahead and do three. Then my slope I just found out to be three halves, so three halves. And then my x value is two, right? That's what I want to find for two apples, what's going to be over y. And then my xo is, well, if I chose three to be my y value, then I need to choose one apple because one apple costs three dollars. Okay? And with that, know that, the only unknown that we have here is y, which is precisely the cost of those two apples considering this linear relationship. Okay? So we can solve this by saying y will be equal to three plus that mass there. So that's going to be three minus three halves. Right, so that's going to be 6 minus 3 halves. Right, so that's going to be 6 or 12, if you will, 12 halves minus 3 halves. That is 9 halves. Okay, so if one apple costs $3, three apples cost $6, and I want to know the value of two apples considering a linear interpolation, then I'm going to come to the conclusion that two apples will cost me $4.5. Right, that's going to be the cost of the apples. Right, so that's the idea of a linear interpolation. We take two discrete values, and then we find the placing the, where these two lie between the two values. So I know that this doesn't have to be two, right? For two, it's quite obvious because it's going to be the, right the midpoint there. But if I wanted for, I know, 1.4, for instance, 1.4 here, I could still do it for 1.4. I could still find a value here for 1.4 over here if I wanted to. All right, so y for 1.4. So that's the idea of a linear interpolation, okay? And as long as you have two values that are close to each other, you're minimizing the mistake, right? So if, for instance, again, if I wanted to find um, the value of, I don't know, how much do... 
doesn't really make sense, but how much do 2.1, 2.1 apples cost? Then it'll be it'll make more sense for me to if I had two values, if I had two, let's redraw this. Let's redraw this table here. Let's say that now I know that this is four, and then three is six. Okay, so now I have a different relationship there. Now, if I wanted the value for 2.1, it makes more sense for me to grab the discrete values of these guys here, because 2.1 falls between these two guys there, then if I were to grab, again, 1 and 3, right? So if I were to grab 1 apple and 3 apples and then try to find for 2.1. Why? Because the 2.1 is going to be closer to these two values, between these two values, for which I already have a relationship, right? I know that 2 is 4 and I know 3 is 6. So it makes more sense for me to grab the 2.1 between these two guys than between the 1 and the 3, which I also know the values, but they're further away from what I'm trying to find. Okay, so that's a linear interpolation, the basics around it, at least the mathematical part of it.